वाशिंगटन डीसी से वॉइस ऑफ अमेरिका के फेसबुक लाइव में आप सबको खुश आमदेद मैं हूं अमान अजहर और आज मेरे साथ जो मेहमान मौजूद है वो किसी तारफ़ के मोहताज नहीं इस बिन यू एस एम्बेसडर टू पाकिस्तान सफ़ी अमेरिका के सफ़ी रहने के अलावा आप नुमाइंदा खसूस बरए पाकिस्तान अफगानिस्तान भी रह चुके हैं आज मैं उनसे गुफ्तु करूँगा कुछ मामला पर अगर इस दौरान में किसी भी वक्त आप कुछ सवाल हमसे पूछना चाहें तो आप फेसबुक पर पोस्ट कीजिए और मेरी कोशिश होगी कि मैं एम्बेसडर ओलसन से उसके बारे में जवाब ले सकूँ एम्बेसडर ओलसन थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर टाइम हेयर लेट मी आस्क नॉन ट्रेडिशनल क्वेश्चन यू बिन इन पाकिस्तान फॉर थ्री ईयर्स डू यू मिस पाकिस्तान फॉर एनी रीजन Yeah, well, I miss the biryani. Absolutely, I miss uh, I miss the spicy food, um, and it's a very hospitable country. Uh, and uh, I would like to go back and see more of the country that I couldn't see when I was ambassador. I would love to get up to the northern areas, which I really didn't have a chance to visit. Well, it's a good thing that you've uh, spoken about uh, spice. There's been some spice going on in the Pakistan-U.S. relations as well of late. Yeah. Uh, which way is it going to turn? I mean, if you were to look at 2018, was it good at all? Well, I think that there are strategic divergences between the United States and Pakistan that have been revealed over the course of the last three years, and especially over the last year. I think uh, for 2019, there's an opportunity for Pakistan. The United States is very focused on pursuing a peaceful settlement to the conflict in Afghanistan, a political settlement with the Taliban. I think Pakistan has an opportunity. uh to take the initiative to help to bring the Taliban to the negotiating table and if it can do so i think that there is a real chance for dramatic improvement in us pakistan relations and when we talk about cooperation uh, i've seen a lot of people in pakistan keep on also suggesting that there's not been enough cooperation from washington and there's more been an emphasis on doing more Uh, how can uh, the two countries kind of strike a balance you've been an ambassador yourself when you were there what what did you used to do well first of all i never used the phrase do more uh i my my view is that pakistan should do less should do less support for the taliban uh less support for the afghan taliban um and less support for militancy uh in general uh so i don't think uh, i think we've gotten into a dialogue where uh, at least publicly there are these exchanges about doing more and and wanting more and things like that and i don't think that's particularly helpful but i do think that there is a strategic divergence uh between the two countries um and i think there is a moment where we have an opportunity to pursue a uh, political settlement um in afghanistan and i think one thing that's that's quite important that is a huge aspect of the relationship uh for the united states given our long standing involvement in afghanistan um and i think it's unrealistic for pakistan to expect that the relationship uh won't be framed in terms of afghanistan until we arrive at some sort of political settlement in mm-hmm. afghanistan Right. Well, there's been a new government uh, in Pakistan lately as well, and it's been uh, some people say it's going to be a new Pakistan. Which uh, do you see that newness kind of uh, spilling over into the U.S.-Pakistan relations? Because it seems to me as though they're continue to be frozen in time. Well, I think that uh, the U.S.-Pakistan relationship has a very long history, and it tends to have its uh, its own dynamic. uh i i don't really have a view on whether there's a new pakistan or not i mean i think we have to wait and see what uh uh what prime minister imran khan uh and his um government do uh what i think is uh new at the level of international relations is uh is pakistan's increasing closeness to china um and uh that has the potential uh to be a shaper of the relationship with the United States uh one aspect of US policy writ large is that it is defining the national security strategy of the United States defines the coming era as one of great power competition including competition between the United States uh and China and to the extent that becomes a framing relation uh, a framing aspect of of the US Pakistan relationship uh then there will be some challenges ahead Um, यहाँ uh, मैं एक बार फिर तमाम वो साथी जो इस वक्त हमें ज्वाइन कर रहे हैं फेसबुक लाइव पे वाशिंगटन डीसी से uh, मैं आपको बता चलूँ कि हम इस वक्त वी के वाशिंगटन स्टूडियो में हैं और हमारे साथ एम्बेसडर ओलसन जो पाकिस्तान के सबक सफ़ी रह चुके हैं वो इस वक्त हमारे साथ गुफ्तु कर रहे हैं तो हम मामला पर अगर आप कोई सवाल पूछना चाहें एम्बेसडर ओलसन से तो प्लीज़ uh, हमारे फेसबुक पेज वी उर्दू के फेसबुक पेज पर लिखिए और मैं मेरी कोशिश होगी कि मैं उनसे ये सवाल मज़ीद पूछूँ एम्बेसडर ओलसन गोइंग बैक to what you were talking um 
we started a conversation with Biryani. Um, do you think there's enough uh, of uh, public diplomacy going on between the two countries, the people to people contact, which is so instrumental when it comes yeah. to uh, any relationship uh, between the two countries? Do you think it's happening enough? Is there enough Biryani going on? Well, there's a, there's a lot of people-to-people -people contact between the two countries. Um, and much of this does not have anything to do with government programs. It simply has to do with the fact that um, many Pakistani families want their kids to go to college, let's say, in the United States. There's a significant diaspora community uh, in the United States um, and, um, and an influential uh, diaspora community in the U.S. And I think that those relations continue to be strong, uh, regardless of the state of uh, the bilateral political relationship. So um, I, I think, and, and you know, one can hope that as the security situation gets better in Pakistan, and I do think it is getting better, uh, there may be more opportunities for uh, American investment and also for potentially one day c one can even hope uh, in, uh, in Pakistan. Uh, but I still think that the, um, the softer aspects of the relationship between the two countries are in pretty good shape. Good. Um, and uh, let me also ask you something just uh, happened which is quite significant, which is the designation of Pakistan as a country of special concern with regards to religious freedom. Yeah. Uh, now, how does that impact Pakistan, if you could elaborate on that, and, and uh, the bilateral relation in general? Well, I think it's an indicator of the U.S. concern about the, the, the status of uh, particularly religious minorities um, in, uh, in Pakistan. Uh, I mean, I, I think that all of us who are, you know, regard ourselves as, you know, friends of Pakistan uh, were disappointed with how the Asya Bibi case uh, developed uh, during the course of this year. I think the Supreme Court made, a, uh, in my opinion, a correct decision. And I thought it was very troubling uh, that in response to uh, protests by a very uh, militant minority, uh, the government felt it had to move away from, uh, from that position. And that's a, that's a real concern to uh, the American people. And by the way, um, it, you know, my sense is it's actually a concern to members of the Pakistani diaspora in, uh, in the United States. Um, and so I think this should be taken as an indication that we do have concerns about, um, uh, about uh, the situation of uh, religious minorities in um, uh, the position of, of religious minorities in, um, in, in Pakistan. Um, I wouldn't think of it so much in terms of the overall relationship. I think it's a very specific concern. Right, and, and we did see that the, the top court in, in Pakistan exoner exonerated uh, Asia Bibi. And so does that uh, also figure into all this? Well, uh, she was exonerated, of course, but my understanding is that she continues to be in some form of detention, and that's the problematic aspect of the case, and that was in response to, as I understand it, pressure from militant groups who took to the streets, and I think that this is... Um, a concern about, uh, I mean, frankly, if I were a Pakistani, I'd be worried about uh, what that means for the rule of law in, uh, in Pakistan. Right. I will tell you all of them once again. All of them who are in this time on Facebook Live and Voice of America are joining us from Washington Studio. If you want to ask something to Ambassador Olsen, who is a member of Islam in Islamabad, then write on our Facebook Live page at this time on our Facebook Live page. ताकि मैं इन्वेस्टर से कुछ मजीद बात पूछ सकूं चाहे वो बरयानी की बात हो या चिकन कढ़ाई की बात हो इन्वेस्टर इफ यू वर टू लुक एट 2018 बैक डू यू थिंक द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स एंड पाकिस्तान केम क्लोजर इन एनी सेंस और वर द मोस्टली मिस्ड अपॉर्चुनिटीज व्हाट डू यू थिंक well, I think that there has been a strate strategic divergence between the United States and Pakistan that has been developing for quite some time. Um, it, uh, my feeling is that in, by 2015, the relationship had sort of reached a, a peak. And of course, you know, it's been a history of peaks and valleys in the long, in the 70 year history of our, uh, of our, of our two countries. Um, and I think that uh, two issues since 2015 have caused us divergence. Um, one is 
the nuclear weapons policy, uh, and the other is um, uh, Pakistan's actions in Afghanistan and support for the Afghan Taliban. Uh, and I think it's very difficult to paper these over, and I don't think it's good for the relationship to pretend that these are not serious issues that have to be addressed. Um, I think there has been there have been efforts to address them um, over the over the course of the past year. I think there's been some frank dialogue officially and unofficially. Uh, but what's important from my perspective is that uh, Pakistan uh, has the opportunity right now going into 2019 uh, to help the United States to achieve a political settlement in Afghanistan. Uh, with regards to Afghanistan. Um, there's been appreciation in Islamabad as well that a stable and peaceful Afghanistan is what they want as well. That's uh, pretty much what they need, uh, having good border relations, good relationship over the border. But then what is the problem exactly if this is the stated policy from Pakistan as well? Well, I, look, I, I believe that there is actually a convergence of interest between the United States uh, and Pakistan um, uh, with regard to Afghanistan. I think it is, it is eminently possible to come up with a political settlement that addresses Pakistan's legitimate concerns with regard to Afghanistan. Um, and, um, and I think that Pakistan will not benefit from chaos um, in Afghanistan. Uh, so I think there's a natural opportunity for us to align our policies, and that is to pursue a political settlement uh, with the Taliban uh, that includes the Taliban. Um, and I think Afghans are ready for this. So. I think there's a considerable degree of convergence right now, and it's just a matter of making this convergence actual as, as, and, and no longer theoretical. And how does uh, China figure into this? Uh, because we've seen that Pakistan has a growing closeness towards Beijing now. Yeah. So could you uh, give your two cents on that? Yeah, I was just in Beijing uh, until the uh, day before yesterday, uh, talking um, uh, in a uh, track two about uh, 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 about Afghanistan with Chinese scholars. And I think there again, there is considerable convergence uh, between the interests of China, uh, the United States, um, and Pakistan with regard to Afghanistan. No one wants Afghanistan to become um, uh, as it was before uh, uh, 2001, uh, when there were large ungoverned spaces, there were presence of terrorist groups. Uh, uh, China does not want that any more than anyone else. And I think that <coughs> China would like to see uh, Afghanistan be a place that can be included in its Belt and Road Initiative um, and somewhat aligned with CPEC. Uh, but first, uh, the first step is to establish security, and to my mind, the, the, that, that essential first step is getting a political settlement. Um, we also have a question uh, from Ibrar Ahmed, who's asking, why is the uh, United States in a hurry to move out from Afghanistan? Now, this has also been concern um, in Washington circles that if the United States is uh, in a hurry to get out of Afghanistan, that kind of encourages a hedging from countries like Pakistan, which, uh, which suits their need. What do you think about that? Well, first of all, let, let's be clear that it, we're not in a hurry. Um, uh, first of all, we've been there 17 years, which by some measures is our longest war. Um, and, um, uh, and we have no current plans uh, for withdrawal. Uh, President Trump has made clear that our policy, our, pr our true presence is condition-based, not timeline-based. Uh, but that said, we are desirous of a political settlement. We think that this conflict will only end through a political settlement. And of course, for the Afghans, this is a war that has been going on in some sense for 40 years. So it's high time to bring about a political settlement. But that doesn't mean we are prepared to cut and run. It means that we want to arrive at a stable solution that allows for some drawdown of U.S. forces, but that's not the most critical thing. The most critical thing is to arrive at a political settlement that allows for uh, uh, Afghanistan to be at peace. Well, I'm sure we're going to have uh, to learn any recipe uh, when you were in Pakistan. You said biryani, but anything else that you could do yourself or you, you've tried doing here in Washington when you came back? 
uh, no, I uh, I rely on my Pakistani friends to do uh, cooking for the pa uh, cooking of Pakistani food. I must say, I haven't attempted it myself. I do cook, but uh, I haven't mastered the spices yet. So there's that still to gr to to learn. So if you were to go back to Pakistan today, what would be the first few things that you would do or you would want to go to places? Well, of course, I'd want to see all my friends uh, in Pakistan, but if I had one place that I could go to, it would be the northern areas, to Gilga, to Hunza, all of, all of those places. I would like very much to go there. Yeah. Ambassador Olsen, thank you very much for your time. I'm sure people, looking at uh, how people have responded, it's been nice and people are still watching. Aap sab dosto ka bahut shukriya Washington DC se Voice of America ke Facebook live mein shirkat ka agar aap isi guftugu ko dobara sunna chahe to ye hamare Facebook page pe maujood hogi aap is bare mein likhna chahe zarur likhiye aur hum us pe follow up karenge aap sab hazrat ka bahut bahut shukriya Washington DC se khuda hafiz